Hi everyone. The construction of the galleon took place in Lisbon, Portugal, in 1580, shortly following the unification of Portugal and Spain. It was christened in honor of Saint Martin, the patron saint of Spain. The vessel measured approximately 60 meters in length, with a displacement of around 1,500 tons. It was equipped with 40 cannons and operated by a crew exceeding 400 individuals. Here are some little known facts about the Spanish galleon San Martin of 1580. San Martin was one of the first galleons to be equipped with falconets, small cannons that were used for close quarters combat. They were relatively light and portable. Falconets typically had a caliber of 45 to 65 mm and fired lead balls or grape shot. Their range was from 200 to 500 meters. Falconets were effective in close combat, as they could inflict significant damage on enemy crews and equipment. The San Martin of 1580 was equipped with 12 falconets, which were mounted on its sides and bow. These falconets were used to protect the ship from enemy ships and to support boarding. They were mounted on swivels, which allowed them to be rotated to target different areas. They were typically fired by a small crew of men. They were a significant advantage for the San Martin in close quarters combat, as they could inflict significant damage on enemy ships and crews. Here is more detailed information about falconets. They were invented in Italy in the early 16th century. They quickly spread throughout Europe and were adopted by many armies and navies. Falconets were made of cast iron or bronze. They were typically loaded from the muzzle. They were relatively inexpensive and easy to manufacture. Falconets played an important role in the development of the naval fleet. They helped to improve the effectiveness of close quarters combat and made ships more protected from boarding. The galleon was also one of the first galleons to be equipped with armor, which protected it from enemy fire. To improve the survivability of galleons, Spanish shipbuilders began experimenting with armor. The armor on the San Martin was made of iron and copper. It was installed on the sides and bow of the ship. The armor protected the ship from enemy cannonballs and bullets, making it more resistant to damage. The armor on the San Martin had a significant impact on the development of naval warfare. It made galleons more protected from enemy fire and contributed to their growing combat effectiveness. Here is more detailed information about the armor on the San Martin. It was made of several layers of iron and copper, which helped to absorb the impact of enemy fire. It was riveted or bolted to the hull of the ship, which helped to keep it in place. It was designed to be removable, so that it could be repaired or replaced if necessary. It was about 2.5 centimeters thick. It was installed on the sides and bow of the ship. The armor on the San Martin was not perfect. It was quite heavy and increased the load on the ship. However, it was a significant step forward in the development of ship armor. The armor on the San Martin was a significant innovation that helped to make galleons more effective warships. It was a precursor to the development of heavier armor that would be used on ships in the centuries to come. Before its involvement in the 1588 Armada, San Martin was engaged in various tasks related to trade and safeguarding Spanish interests in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. It was one of the galleons transporting goods between Spain and its colonies in the Americas. San Martin was the flagship of Alonso Pérez de Guzmán, commander-in-chief of the Spanish Armada. The Battle of Grovelin, also known as the Battle of the Grovelin or the Battle of the Lizard, took place on August 8, 1588, in the estuary of the English Channel off the coast of France. It was a confrontation between the Spanish Invincible Armada and the English fleet. During the battle, the English fleet capitalized on its maneuverability and tactical advantages, leading to a defeat for the Spanish and significant losses. The Spanish Armada was attacked by English ships that used a tactic called lightning maneuver. 
This meant that the English ships quickly approached the Spanish ships and opened fire at close range. The Spanish ships were not prepared for such tactics, and they often found themselves trapped. Spanish sailors were well trained and experienced. However, they were not prepared for the conditions of the North Sea. Storms and fog often made navigation difficult, and Spanish ships often lost each other. Following the unsuccessful Invincible Armada campaign, most surviving ships were scattered, many encountered storms or faced other difficulties. San Martin had to return to Spain in a damaged condition. San Martin continued to serve in the Spanish fleet until 1614. San Martin played an important role in the development of the Spanish navy. It helped Spain establish itself as the dominant naval power in Europe in the 16th century. The defeat of the Armada marked a turning point in naval history. It highlighted the vulnerability of large fleets to weather conditions and the maneuverability of more agile English ships. Here are a few comical aspects related to the history of the Spanish galleon San Martin and the Spanish Armada. The galleon was named after Saint Martin, who was known for his generosity and compassion. This was rather ironic, given that the Spanish Armada was sent to England to conquer the country and force it to pay tribute to Spain. During the invasion of England, the Spanish Armada was attacked by a storm. Picture this. The Spanish Armada charging toward England, but oh, Mother Nature ain't having it. A storm crashes the party, wreaking havoc. Amid the chaos, our ship pal, the San Martin, miraculously stays afloat, but it was so damaged that it had to be towed to repairs in Spain. During the Battle of Groveline, San Martin was attacked by the English ship Blaze, which fired several cannonballs at it. One of the cannonballs hit Guzman's cabin, but he survived because he was in the toilet at the time. After the Spanish Armada's spectacular flop in England, the good old San Martin decided to sail back to Spain for a spa day. I mean, repairs. But guess what? While it was chilling in the shipyard, minding its own business, a wildfire appeared out of nowhere and decided to have a hot party on board. And you won't believe it. That fire caused more chaos than a bull in a china shop, managing to outdo the damage caused by the entire English fleet. The fire also destroyed much of the evidence of Guzman's incompetence, so he was able to avoid punishment. These comical aspects do not diminish the historical significance of San Martin and the Spanish Armada. However, they help us to look at these events from a different perspective and see in them not only tragedy, but also humor. Thanks for watching.